Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go through some of the best solo terroid builds that we've got from the Teal Mask. With the introduction of the Teal Mask, we had about 100 new Pokemon added to Scarlet and Violet. I've been through all of these Pokemon and picked out the select few that I think are going to be very good options going in for soloing terrorists, specifically five and six star terrorists, or farming high cost items, terror shards, or even Herba Mystica, if they're the sort of items that you're gonna need in your games. Of course, like all of our other terrorid video build guides on the channel, all of the Pokemon that we feature in today's video will be in the description below. If you wanna take a closer look at the actual movesets with EVs and all other information that we go over in today's video. Like I mentioned, these are gonna be specifically for farming through five and six star terrorids. It's not to say that they won't work against seven star terrorids but you have to be a bit more catered for seven star terrorids as they kind of interact a little bit differently than other raids that we're kind of used to just in the base games so first pokemon we're going to start off with probably no surprise to a lot of you is going to be Ogapon. it is a very flexible pokemon because it has access to its masks it's going to have the wellspring mask the hearth flame mask and the cornerstone mask which give it the ability to turn into a water grass fire grass and rock grass pokemon obviously without any mask attached it has its default form which is going to be its teal mask form but it then opens the door for you to have a held item now most cases for the ogapon i would say if you're not holding a mask i'd say probably just chuck on a shell bell item because it just means that the recovery options for ogapon are a lot easier and you're not having to rely on something like synthesis that we've got on this set so ogapon obviously here is going to be a grass and water terror type because it is holding the wellspring mask is going to be locked in terror type wise because of that mask as well so anytime you hold a mask with the Ogapon, if it changes its secondary typing, then its terror type will also be locked as well. So that's something that we don't really have much of an option for. Now, the moveset that we've got for this Ogapon, and this is to really cater for any form of the Ogapon that you're going to be taking into the terror is, whether that be the teal mask form, the cornerstone, the hearth flame form, or this wellspring form. It will work with each individual one. The EV spread is pretty straightforward. We've went for 252 HP, 252 attack, with an adamant nature and we have the move set synthesis focus energy swords dance and ivy cudgel so the basic premise of this move set is going to be turn one go for that focus energy that's going to boost the rates of critical hits and because ivy cudgel is a high critical hit rate move anyway you're pretty much guaranteeing after a focus energy that this move is always going to land a critical hit after the focus energy go for three sword stances max out your attack and then you can just start spamming with the Ivy Cudgel. And depending on the mask that you've got, it will depend on the typing Ivy Cudgel as well. Because if you're holding the Wellspring mask like this one is, Ivy Cudgel is going to be a water type attack. Hearth Flame mask is going to be a fire type attack and the Cornerstone going to be a rock type attack. So like I say, it will change our secondary typing, but it will also dictate the typing of ivy cudgel as well synthesis is there just for a line of recovery if you need it like i say if you're going for the teal mask form which is its base form you can put a shell bell item on there so it takes the, the less reliance of using the synthesis throughout the battle but a very very strong set and i think the ability to change the masks not have to worry about changing terror type as well because that changes with the mask makes it a very very strong option to farm through five and six star terror it's very very easy the nice thing about the critical hits as well is if you've got that focus energy and your opposing pokemon starts to boost its defenses because of the critical hits you're kind of going to ignore all those defense boosts so you don't even need to worry if your opponent's sitting there going for iron defenses bulk ups or anything like that the critical hits are going to just ignore those the full time so if you're hitting super effectively and on top of the added bonus when you do terrestrialize as well you're going to be doing massive damage once you've maxed out your attack with that sword stance and Ogapon going to be probably one of the better pokemon that we've got access to from the teal mask the next pokemon we've got available to us is going to be victory bell one of my favorites from the teal mask We've went for the terror typing on here of grass. You can go terror typing poison if you prefer, if you need a poison type to just run through potential poison grass type Pokemon or any other poison weak Pokemon. We've opted for the expert belt as the held item on the victory bell again, level 100. And the moveset for this victory belt is going to be sunny day, acid spray, growth and giga drain. 
Chlorophyll is the ability here and the EV spread is 252 HP, 252 special attack and a modest nature. A basic premise of this is going to be use that acid spray three times, which is going to lower the special defense of opposing Pokemon by two stages every time you use it. So maximum of three, get that special defense right down to minus six. Then use your sunny day and then use growth because growth under sunny day is going to give you a two times boost to your special attack and attack stat every time you use it opposed to just a plus one when the sun's not active on the field and then after you've used that three times under the sun you're going to have max special attack which then plays into the part of using the giga drains because you've used acid spray three times already you should be at a stage where you can terrestrialize and then just do absolutely devastating damage to your opponent really nice options here with victory bell one of my favorites like i say and a really nice set if you did want to go for a poison terror type you could change the giga drain to sludge bomb you could keep the sunny day if you wanted just so you've got that kind of combination with the growth just to get set up a bit quicker but Sludge Bomb and Terra Poison is definitely an option on Victory Bill as well. But if you do that, then I would say probably change the Expert Belt to a Shell Belt item. So you've got a line of recovery. I feel like you don't really need it too much on this set because Giga Drain is going to be recovering health every time you do big damage anyway. So in that respect, that's why we have got the Expert Belt just to give us a bit more damage. But that is the Victory Bell. The next Pokemon we're featuring is Clefable. It is a Fairy type Pokemon and the Terra typing on this is Fairy as well. Again, we're holding the Expert Belt on this Clefable level 100 with a move set of Moonlight, Fake Tears, Calm Mind and Moonblast. EV spread is going to be 252 HP, 252 special attack with a modest nature. And we've got the ability Magic Guard for this actual particular set is probably the best one that we've got available to us. Cute Charm's not really viable going into anything. Magic Guard gives you a little bit of protection against kind of chip damage, anything like a burn damage, poison damage or anything like that. You're only taking damage from actual attacking moves. If you go unaware, which is the hidden ability, then you're kind of conflicting against what we're trying to do with the move set. So it really doesn't work that well. The Moonlight is there for a line of recovery, of course, if we need it and takes off the, the necessity to have something like the Shell Belt as the held item. So meaning we've got a bit more power with that Expert Belt there. Big Tears is an option for lowering that special defense on opposing Pokemon. It's going to lower it two stages every time you use it. But unlike Acid Spray, it won't work through the shield. So once that Pokemon, the opposing Pokemon has its shield set up, you're not going to be able to utilize fake tears like you would have done without the shield there. So you're then going to be relying on boosting your own stats. So something like Calm Mind that's going to boost your special attack and special defense by one stage every time you use it. Get that set up, get it to plus six if you can. You probably don't need to every time you do it. If you've got three fake tears set up already, Probably three to four calm mines is going to be enough before you start launching those moon blasts off, which are going to do big damage to your opponent. But that is the Clefable. Really nice option as well. It gives you a really good fairy type option with decent bulk, a decent ability as well, and a good line of recovery with that moonlight option on there as well. Next Pokemon is again another one of my favorites, Snorlax. I really love this as a raid Pokemon. And normal is one of those weird types that you probably think, well, it's not really hitting anything for super effective damage. But I feel like Snorlax is going to be one of those Pokemon that you can take into a bunch of different raids against a lot of things that are going to be a little bit awkward to maybe take down. Where Snorlax is going to be bulky enough to get set up, do good damage throughout the raid and kind of just tank hits in the process while you kind of beat out those maybe sometimes more difficult raid Pokemon that you can kind of come across in the games. You have went for the normal Terra typing on this Snorlax, you can change that if you like. I just feel like getting the most out of our normal type attacks is probably the most beneficial option on the Snorlax and we're not giving ourselves any more weaknesses than we already have. Shell Belt is the held item for a line of recovery, of course that's going to be quite important on the Snorlax. Level 100 with a moveset of Belly Drum, High Horsepower, Crunch and Body Slam and an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack with an adamant nature. And the ability here is going to be thick fat. And this is one of the big bonuses with Snorlax as well. It's got this ability of thick fat. So if you're going against Terra Pokemon that can be quite awkward and they are primarily going to be hitting you with fire or ice type attacks, again, it gives Snorlax an even bigger advantage because you're going to be taking half the amount of damage from those attacks that they'll be throwing out at you. And you've got excellent coverage between the ground, the dark and the normal type attacks here. You're going to be able to hit pretty much everything that you're going to come up against. The belly drum there is obviously to have a way to max out your attack very quickly. And because of the sheer amount of bulk that you've got with the Snorlax, you're going to be able to soak up hits, no trouble at all. 
and retain that health back through the Shell Bell item very, very quickly. And I think overall, Snorlax is just a very reliable Pokemon to have as an option. The next Pokemon we are featuring in today's video is going to be Gliscor. Again, one of my favorites and a Grand Flying type Pokemon. So you could have the option to go Flying Terra type on this. But I just feel like we haven't got a massive amount of great ground Terra type Pokemon in the format that can do the sorts of things that Gliscor can do. So that's predominantly why we're choosing going for the ground Terra type over the flying. But like I say, it is an option on there if you would like to do that. Shell Bell is the item of choice for a line of recovery. Of course, we are level 100 because one of the big drawbacks of Gliscor coming into Scholar and Violet is that it's lost access to Roost. So it doesn't have that option for recovery now. Shell Belt is going to be really necessary for making this thing work. Now, we haven't got any PP on there because I have been EV in it, but don't worry about that. The moveset generally is going to be Sword Stance, Screech, great combination. Screech lowers the defense of the opposing Pokemon by two stages every time you use it. So lowering that defense stat, Sword Stance is going to boost your attack by two stages every time you use it. So you pretty much want to use three Screech, three Sword Stance. That bottoms out your opposing Pokemon's defense stat and maxes out your attacking stat with that Sword Stance. Then you can use the Earthquake or Dual Wing Beat, whichever one you would like to utilize. Uh, we've got Hyper Cutter there as the ability of choice. You can go with Toxic Heal as the hidden ability and put on a Toxic Orb. But I don't feel like it's going to be recovering you as much as you would be with the Shell Bell. It does give you nice immunity to status conditions, of course, things like sleep that can be a bit annoying with yawn and things like that. But otherwise, I think the Hyper Cutter, just being able to avoid your attacking stat being lowered, especially after you've set those sword stances up, is really quite valuable. EV spread we've got on the Glide score is pretty straightforward. We've got an adamant nature with 252 HP and 252 attack. And that is pretty much the Glide score. We've went through what the Screech, the Sword Stance does. And then you've got your main attacks. It's pretty straightforward setting this one up. But a very good Pokemon nonetheless. And very strong when it's in the right situations. Next up is Mandibuzz, the Dark and Flying type Pokemon. Terra type for this Mandibuzz is going to be Dark type. Expert Belt is the Hell item, level 100. And the moveset we are going for is going to be Roost, Fake Tears, Nasty Plot and Dark Pulse. And the EV spread is going to be 252 HP, 252 special attack with a modest nature and the ability Overcoat. So great Pokemon in particular because of the Overcoat ability. It's going to give you immunity to powder type attacks. So things like Spore, Stun Spore and other kind of powder moves you're going to be completely immune to. So you don't need to really worry about those going into Terror Raids. It's going to give you a bit more freedom as well against specific Pokemon that you might be going up against. The Roost is there to give you a line of recovery. Great option on the Mandibuzz. Just remember when you are using it, you are going to be grounded for the rest of that turn. So if there is the threat of ground type attacks coming out, you will get hit by them. Just to keep that in mind, not that it's going to really matter too much with what Pokemon you're going to be taking Mandibuzz in against, but it could be something that comes into play and might catch you out just to be aware of that. Fake Tears is going to be the option that we use to reduce the special defense on opposing Pokemon by two stages every time you use it. It won't work through the shield though, so you've got to get these up before the shield goes up. Nasty Plot's going to boost your special attack by two stages every time you use it. So pretty much you can see the line of thought that we've went through with this one. A little bit like the Gliscor, but just more down a special route. And then Dark Pulse is going to be a big damage option on the Mandibuzz. Now, Mandibuzz not really seen as an offensive kind of Pokemon, but it's no slouch. Honestly, it is actually very good as a raid option, especially because Dark types. I don't feel like we've got many good Dark types that can do this sort of job of lowering the defenses on the opposing Pokemon, setting itself up being able to do good damage while also kind of taking a bunch of hits at the same time. Mandibuzz known for its good defensive capabilities, so I think it just complements this Pokemon. It might not be hitting as hard even when it's set up as some of the other Pokemon in the format, but I think the, the fact that it has that longevity can sit on the field for a long period of the time to allow you that time to set up, to have the recovery with the Roost as well, and then just chip away at your opponent. And I think just a really nice option overall. Something that I did want to include that was in the Teal Mask that I thought would be beneficial, especially against some of those more tricky raid Pokemon that you are going to come up against. Next up is Coma Ore, and I couldn't do this raid video without including Coma Ore. It has a bunch of options, but the one that we went for in this video, of course it is a dragon fighting type. We've went for the Terra Typing Dragon because again, 
we don't have many options for raid Pokemon that are going to be taking advantage of that dragon typing and specifically going up against five and six star Terrids that have that dragon typing. I think Coma Ore is a very good option with what it can offer. Level 100, Shell Bell as the item line of recovery there. Moveset is going to be Sword Stance, Screech, Drain Punch and Dragon Claw. We've got the ability Bulletproof there. You can go Soundproof and of course Overcoat as well is an option on the Coma Ore. I just like Bulletproof because it gives us nice immunity against a vast array of different moves. EV spread, 252 HP, 252 attack and an adamant nature as well on here. Again, a little bit like the Gly score where we're going to go for those screeches to lower the defense of the opposing Pokemon by two stages every time you use it. Set ourselves up with the sword stance, get ourselves to plus six attack stat and then just use a combination of drain punch if we need to for recovery or just take advantage of that Dragon Claw that's going to be hitting for very big damage, especially after we do Terrastalize. But that is the Coma Ore, and I do think a really nice option going into those specific Dragon-type Terror Aids. Next up is a Fire-type option we've got from the Teal Mask, and it is going to be Nine Tails Fire-type. We're going with a Terror type of Fire as well, just to get the benefit from that base typing and the additional stab boost that we'll get on top of that. Shell Bell is the item of choice, so we've got a line of recovery, level 100 with a moveset of Sunny Day, Nasty Plot, Fake Tears, and Heat Wave. And we've got the Drought ability as well, which summons the sun to the field for five turns as soon as you kind of hit the field, with an AV spread of 252 HP, 252 Special Attack with a Modest Nature. Basic premise is going to be to go for those Fake Tears from turn one to turn three, lower the Special Defense on the opposing Pokemon by minus six. And then you're going to set yourself up with those Nasty Plots. Nasty Plot going to boost your Special Attack by two stages every time you use it and then take advantage of the sun being on the field. If the sun does run out before you start attacking, you can then set it up again with another sunny day and then start utilizing that heat wave, which is gonna do absolutely huge damage coming off a pretty high special attacking stat that Ninetales does have. So that is the Ninetales, a really nice option of a fire type that we've got from the Teal Mask. Something I think you can take advantage of going into five and six star terror raids, especially if Ninetales is one of your more favorite Pokemon. Next up is gonna be Poliwrath and it is a water and fighting type. You can again on this one go for a water terror type if you prefer, but I prefer the fighting terror type on this just because we can go against a lot of water type Pokemon and that maybe have a different terror type in the raid and with that water absorbability that polyrath does have access to i think you can really take advantage of that and it's got some nice synergy there as well we do have the shell bell item as our held item just to make sure that we are getting as much health recovery back as possible i think the one drawback with polyrath compared to some of the other belly drum users that we've got in the format is it's not as good defensively so it really does rely on having good lines of recovery throughout the battle especially because this set is going to be relying quite heavily on Belly Drum. It's not going to be something you're going to be taking in to every single Terror Aid, but it does give you some nice options against some specific Pokemon that have that Fighting Weak Terror type um, that you maybe don't have access to already. So level 100 once again, and a moveset of Rain Dance, Belly Drum, Liquidation, and Drain Punch with the ability Water Absorb, like I say, anytime you get hit by water type attacks, it will, even after you're terrestrialized, it will recover your health rather than you take any damage from anything. Have an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack with an adamant nature. The basic premise of this moveset is going to be going for that belly drum turn one. You should be able to get it off and then going for the drain punch turn two. Liquidation is an option there. If you need it, you can also go for the rain dance to boost the power of liquidation as well. And liquidation also has the added effect of having the chance to lower the opponent's defense stat as well, making your attacks hit that little bit harder. So it's pretty straightforward, the Polyrath, but that is the build and a decent option to take in against specific fighting weak terror raid Pokemon. And the final Pokemon, I was kind of toying with the idea whether I include this or not, but I do think it gives you a nice option of a terror bugs type Pokemon if you're looking for one. It's generally a little bit better than Lortix as well in regards to its base stats, so it's not a slouch. I think you do need the Shell Bell as a line of recovery on it though, because without it, you're going to struggle a little bit, even though we do have access to Synthesis as one of the move options on Levani, but a bug and grass type, so it does have a very unique typing, of course. Uh, Bugs is the terror type that we went for at level 100 with the Shell Bell and the moveset that we went for is Synthesis. Gives you recovery if you need it throughout the battle and then we have that nice combination of Sword Stance and Screech. It's so complementary to each other and we went for Lunge. You do have access to X Scissor but I guess Lunge is probably a little bit better because 
it does lower the attacking stat of the Pokemon every time you use it. So you've got that added bonus to kind of give your defenses a little bit of a boost going forward in the Terror Raid. Chlorophyll is the ability there, but you can really change this for anything on the Levania. It's not really going to matter too much. EV spread is 252 HP, 252 attack and an adamant nature. But this is probably more for those of you that are really struggling to find a solid bug type that you're wanting to use in Terror Raids. It gives you decent options against certain psychic terror types or dark terror types that the bug type would come in handy for. And just a different option, of course, if you are a big Levani fan, then this is the raid build for you, I guess. So that is all of the builds that we're going to feature in today's video. As always, all of the builds that we have featured will be down in the description below. If you would like to take a closer look at those to replicate them in your own games or just have a look at some of the options that we featured in today's video. Of course, I would love to hear what options you've been using to have more success in your games. Of course, a lot of the Pokemon that we featured do have a lot of different options on them these are just some options that i feel are quite optimal for going in and farming five and six star terror raids that i hope are going to be useful for going up against even some of the more tricky terror raids that we do come across even in paldea and kitakami so i hope you have a lot of success farming these raids in your game to just get these higher cost items that we only have access to in terror raids, specifically terror shards and of course, the Herba Mystica as well. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. If you have found today's video useful, please drop a like on it. It does really, really help out. And if you want to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content, do subscribe to the channel. Thank you once again for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day. Take care of yourselves more importantly than anything else. And I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.